Hi everyone, today I'm going to be colouring this little tree um, in a pot. This is from the Miniature Secret Garden by Johanna Basford. Now it's a very small picture as it's from the, uh, from the miniature book and I thought I would show you firstly how to colour it with the pot and the little leaves but also a few tips for getting into really small details which we do have in this particular picture. Now for the pot I'm just going to get started. Now I'm using um, Studler Ergosoft pencils, they don't have names, this is number 73. So I'm just going to get going with the edge of the pot and, uh, and chat away as I go. So you can see this pencil has got a very fine point which is what you're going to need for this book. Now I have got two different pencil sharpeners that I use to get a really fine point. Now I've got a Derwent um, sharpener, I'm trying to think of the name of it, which um, I use, which I was fortunately sent by Derwent. Um, which I tend to use for my um, Derwent Lightfast pencils, but I can also find handy for this. And uh, I'm now going to go to a lighter shade, which is the number 49. Um, but I've also got a little tiny um, sharpener, which came with my children's geometry set, just like that, which I find can get which is really good for pencils as they get really short. The Derwent pencil sharpener, because it's got a sort of pencil feeder in it, you can't use a really short um, pencil in it. So I use that one instead. The same as all my other barrel sharpeners. It's the same, you can't use a tiny pencil. Now I'm gonna go with my number 16. It's upside down. That's really useful for you, isn't it? Number 16. Now, because I want this pot, I'm going to go all the way over what I've already coloured here. I want the pot to have a bit of a shine, so I'm going to leave some white in the middle so it looks like it's just catching the light a little bit. Now, this, as you can sort of tell, I'm trying to do this looking like a sort of terracotta pot. You see I'm going over most of the shine but leaving just a little bit. Now, terracotta isn't highly shiny, so we don't want a huge shine, but we will catch the light in the middle which is the effect that I'm trying to get. So colour over a little bit. So if you zoomed in really closely, which my camera won't allow me to zoom in anymore, you will see that there's some white paper there. It isn't obvious from this distance away, which is the effect we want really. I don't want it to look like we've forgotten to, to um, colour it. Now this is number 42. It's a bit more of an orangey shade, which I'm just going to add on top to sort of brighten up a little bit. And then we're going to do a bit more shadow. Now with the terracotta pots, you think, you know, they're sitting in the garden there for a while. They might be quite dirty or they might have moss growing on them. So you can use your imagination a bit, put dirt and moss and things like that. Now, I'm going to use a brown, a darker brown. This is the number 76. And I'm going to try and emphasise the shadow on the very edge here of the pot. The idea is I press quite hard along the line there that Johanna's drawn and then gently just pull in slightly with some colour from there. The idea is to try and make the pot look more rounded, less flat. I'm going to do the same on the other side. It's probably quite difficult for you to see. As I say, I cannot zoom in anymore or I should just get a blur. So uh, hopefully you can just about make out what I'm doing and I'm also going to pull some shadow under here because this is like a little lip on the pot there would be a shadow underneath so we're just showing that a little bit and I'm going to do a little bit more on this side and then I'm going to blend that back in with the darker of these um, orangey browns that we used before, which is the number 73. Um, so I'm just going to go right over the top of the dark brown that's there and uh, pull that dark colour through. Now these, although they're quite cheap pencils, these Ergosofts, they do blend really nicely. <sighs> Sorry. Um, and I really enjoy using them. And I like the, the fact that you can get this fine point. And as you see, it's not breaking off. You do have to be gentle. It will snap if you <laughs> push down too hard. But uh, um, it's uh, it does it can get into all those little details which sometimes some of the books um, have. I'm 
just fiddling around until I think it looks how I want it to look. Now I'm very tempted to add a bit of green on top and um, just to show you how it might look if we wanted a sort of bit of a mossy effect. So this is number 57 and I'm just going to do a little bit at the bottom here I think. If there was going to be some moss it'd be just down here just a little bit and I'm trying to apply it in the same so we've got a lighter application in the middle where the light is and darker on the edges just a little bit there and you could play around with that add lots of color now because it's not zoomed in very well you can't really see it very well so you could see yours much better you might need to use a magnifying glass some people for these pages I have to try and put my head quite near sometimes to get it to uh, to work right to for me to be able to see it now the leaves now I always find that if you color a leaf a couple of different colors it looks more interesting than if you just color it one and with a very small leaf um, we haven't got much space for that but I'm going to have a go anyway. This pencil hasn't got a number on. I'm not going to use it because then it's difficult for you to know which one it is. This one, number five. So I'm going to go in with this number five. I am going to sharpen it, if you excuse me, a little bit first because it's. I want it at a really fine point. And what I'm going to do is um, use this one at the bottom of the leaf and then a different colour on the tip. So, and I'm going to do each leaf the same just for simplicity's sake. So, I'm just going to put some colour in the very base and pull it towards the centre so it fades towards the centre and then it will blend in better. Because leaves don't have, well, some of them do actually have one colour and then another colour. But I always think it looks nicer if one's blended into the other just makes your drawing look a bit neater and you could do more than two colors but I wouldn't recommend for something this small and the page the facing page which is uh, very pretty has some even smaller leaves on which you would just would not be able to do more than one color really but there's a challenge for you maybe you like that now some people they enjoy using markers. Now for this size you would need to use fine liners. You really wouldn't be able to use anything bigger than that I wouldn't think and uh, I can't imagine it being any too easy for anyone doing um, watercolour or anything but there are very fine brushes and I've seen some absolutely phenomenal work with watercolour. So there's my darker leaf part of the leaf and my, I've chosen 57 to go with it for the tip so we're just going to go in and do the, the ends. Now, I find with leaves, combinations of greens are pretty, but also sometimes using a yellow can be rather nice. And then when you want your autumn colours, you can bring in the browns and the reds and the oranges and they can look really stunning. But uh, also some people are much more daring and they'll do all sorts of colours, pinks, purples, you know, all sorts of non-leafy colours. I mean, we have to remember that Johanna's work is magical at the end of the day and it's up to you how you colour it so you can do all sorts of mad colours if you want to and some of them can look absolutely beautiful so we're just we're just covering over all the whole leaf with this colour with a medium pressure and hopefully it's just going to blend in that darker colour and uh, and there we go and that's all I'm going to do with that little one um, and uh, and that's that so hopefully that's helped you with doing the pot and understanding a bit more about how to get those little tiny details thank you for watching and uh, happy coloring <laughs>